Good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday to you all. I'm going to allow everyone a couple of moments to join in. Wonderful to see so many of you getting ready to wake up and wiggle your way into Wednesday. My name is Lucy. If you haven't flowed with me before, we have 30 minutes of power this morning to get you ready for your day ahead. All you're going to need is two blocks. If you don't have a block at home, then just something that's stable that's going to support you into a balance. So either a water bottle or a hardback book will do a great job. And then when you're ready, guys, we're going to start over on our mats in a downward facing dog. So come on in when you're ready. And I want you just to take your time to arrive in your downward dog. So give yourself a little bit of a, a wiggle around to get there. If you're anything like me, downward dog is a really awkward place to be at 8 a.m. in the morning. I'm super tight in the backs of the legs, tight in the shoulders, tight in the ribs, tight in the neck. So just allow your body a couple of moments to wiggle around, to feel what's happening for you today. And you might observe where there may be tension. You also may observe where there might be space. And once you've padded the heels to the earth in turn and just given a little bit of attention to your neck and shoulders, then start to come to stillness. Spread the toes wide on your mat, spread the fingers wide on your mat and see if you can start to come to stillness in this downward dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Feet may be hip width apart. If the heels don't reach the earth, that's okay. Active bend in the knee so that you draw the femur bones up back into the pelvis and roll the tailbone higher to the sky. Close your ribs so they're not flaring out to the sides and then really engage navel to spine as you keep that awareness in the torso. Slide the shoulders back and then bring your ears in line with the biceps and your gaze can be gently softening back toward the space between the feet and start to find your breath here. Ujjayi, active breath. So that breath will remain through the nose throughout the entirety of our practice today, building heat in the body, but also setting ourselves a rhythm to really hold ourselves accountable to breathe today. Let's find three of those breaths together. We inhale one, exhaling into the nose. Inhale two, and exhale. Full breath for three, and exhale. Send the right leg up to the sky on your next breath in. Keep the hips square and flex the foot so you're really pressing energy through the heel rather than through the toes. Naturally, energy will land in the toes when you activate through the back of the leg. As you next breathe in, lift the hip Lift the heel even higher, and then as you exhale, step the foot between the hands, heel toe. Soften the back knee to the mat, and inhale the hands long overhead to the sky, and Janayasana. Allow the biceps to pass the ears if that's accessible for you, and then pull the shoulders down the back. Just check that your front knee is stacked directly above the ankle, just so that you're safe in the joints, and you can choose how deep you want to take that lunge, so that you start to peel open into that left hip flexor muscle group. As you next breathe in, lift those fingertips higher. As you exhale, squeeze the elbows wide behind your back. Think about lifting your heart to the sky, so you're lengthening through your thoracic mid-back body. As you next breathe in, slight release from the lunge. Re-extend the arms as you tuck the pelvis. Exhale to take it deeper into the lunge, squeeze those elbows wide. Two more here, guys, breathing in. Notice how you're adjusting the neck slightly with every breath. Exhale, gaze lifts. One last one, full breath in. And exhale. Framing the front foot. Tuck your back toes, step yourself to plank. 
Drive the heels to the back wall, take a full breath in as you draw the heart forward. Exhaling, modify knees to mat, squeeze the elbows to ribs as you keep belly engaged all the way to the mat. Bhujangasana, cobra, slide the hands back to the chest as you breathe in. Exhaling to release, tap the toes. We meet back in a downward facing dog. Three breaths together. Slow, inhale one. And breathing out. Wrapping the inner biceps together for two. And breathe it out. Lengthening the breath for three. And exhale. On the next breath in, left leg will find the sky, keeping that left hip square. So it's really easy here for that left hip to want to pop open. I want you to resist that hip, press into the heel as you activate the space behind the kneecap. Breathing in to rise the heel higher, exhale, step the foot between the hands, heel, toe, and release the back knee to the earth. Inhale, hands to the sky, Anjani Asana. Checking again with that front knee or the ankle. Biceps rolling past the ears, if that's accessible for you this morning. Allow the body to settle and breathe. And then on your next inhale, hands lift a little higher and exhale to squeeze those elbows wide behind your back. Visualize taking that lift from your heart Rather than cramping or crushing into your lower back body, we're looking for space in the spine. Inhale, release the lunge, hands lift high. Exhale, squeeze elbows wide, lift the chest. So I see if you can start to smooth that movement out. Inhaling to release. Exhale, take it bigger. One last one here, full breath in. And exhale. Hands frame the foot, step yourself through plank, and this time you have the choice from your plank how you choose to move through your vinyasa. So option one will be where we took the first time with the knees modified to the mat. Option two, chaturanga, high to low plank. We inhale the chest forward over the wrists, exhale high to low plank, inhale through upward facing dog, and exhale downward dog. Three breaths together, breathing in one, and long breath out as you pull those shoulders away from your ears. Inhaling two, and exhale. Even bigger breath for three, and exhale. Bend the knees now, look forward. You may choose to step, hop, or float the feet to meet the hands. If you're floating, be light. Inhale, halfway lift as you draw the chest forward. Exhale, forward fold. Remember you can bend the knees as much as you need in that forward fold to get the belly to just gently graze the thighs. Inhale, the hands sweep high, Uddhava Hastasana. Exhaling, hands to your heart. Samastiti. And Jali Mudra. And just close the eyes, guys. Take a moment to invite an intention into your practice. And if you would rather not work with intention, you just choose to focus on breath, then know that's okay as well. Let's seal those intentions together with a full breath in. Easy breath out, let it go. <sighs> Flowing through Surya Namaskar A together, just to bring a bit of fluidity into the self this morning. As you breathe in, the hands sweep high. Exhale, swan dive forward. Uttanasana, let it go over the legs. Release the neck. Half lift on the inhale, try to smooth out the movements. We never stop moving. Exhaling to plank. I'm going to take the modified variation, but you may choose to flow through full vinyasa. Exhaling, high to low. Inhale, cobra or upward dog. Chest rises. 
Exhale, tuck your toes, press back, active arms. Downward dog. Full breath in. Long breath out. Two more here, breathing in. Spinning those inner thighs to the back wall on the breath out. Inhale, tailbone lifts higher. And exhale, bend the knees, look forward, step up or lightly float, feet to hands. Halfway lift, we lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. Sweep the hands to the sky on the inhale. Constant flow. Exhale, hands to heart. Surya Namaskar B now. We inhale, Utkatasana, chair pose. Deep grounding into the backs of your heels. Don't worry so much about rooting the toes. The toes actually may even choose to lift away from your mat. And notice what's happening in your tailbone. Here it's really easy to stick out the bum and then start to arch into the lower back. We want to really resist. So think about scooping, tucking your lower back underneath the torso and then re-lengthen the spine. Take a full breath in. As you exhale, start to rock forward into the toes and lift the heels as high as they will go. Find little magnets between the knees as you internally wrap the thighs. So you're looking to become one strong root with both of those feet, keeping you grounded into your mat. We are sinking our seat for five, four, breathing for three, two, and for one. Hands will find your mat. If you would like to work into your crow pose, Bikasana, you can start to find that here. If you know that crow is not for you this morning and you're still working into those wrists, you may choose to take Malasana Yogi Squat. So option one will be your crow. Bringing those knees up into the backs of the triceps, thinking forward and up with the heart and the head so that the head doesn't weigh you down. If you're not so comfortable there, Malasana Yogi Squat will be your variation here. We have about five to 10 breaths to play. Even though it's still early in your practice, if a headstand inversion is calling you here, you are more than welcome to start coming up. Wherever you are, if you're in your crow pose, start to think here about either preparing for a shoot back or just a step back to plank through your vinyasa. If you're in your Malasana Yogi squat, simply bring the hands to the mat, re-extend the legs, halfway lift, and take your vinyasa from here. We will all meet back together in a downward facing dog. From the downward dog, inhale the right leg to the sky, bend the right knee, roll the hip open. I want you to squeeze the right heel toward the right sit bone as tightly as you can. Visualize something clamped shut behind the back of the knee. The hips here are stacking one on top of the other, but just notice what's happening in the right shoulder. Try to square the, square the shoulders so that your heart is still parallel to your mat. From here guys, optional wild thing. If you would like to flip over very, very gently, with control, that right foot is going to make it to the mat and the right hand will shine long overhead. We're not here for long. So really feel that engagement and control. The right foot will then step all the way to the top of your mat between the hands to arrive into your crescent lunge. Hands reach long overhead to the sky. I want you to bind those hands just as we did at the start, biceps moving past the ears. And if you find that you are compressing into the lower spine, if you're slightly bendier in that space, then encourage a bend in your back knee. We're here for three breaths. Lifting from the chest. Try and be still in the pose. Notice what comes up for you here.
One more. As you exhale, we open out warrior two. Spinning the back heel to the mat, the arms will extend open wide. Checking the front knee is aligned over the ankle and rolling out to the right rather than collapsing in to your left. Be still and breathe. Feel the energy rising from the bases of your feet, traveling through the legs, up the torso, rising through the crown of the head. As you next inhale, we flip the palm, reverse your warrior, peeling open right ribs. Exhale the right hand. We'll find the mat in front of the right foot. We prepare to fly, Adha Chandrasana. Left foot will rise up to the ceiling. If you're finding that you are collapsing in that underneath rib cage, I would like you to find a block. This is where your water bottle or your hardback book will come in handy. Right hand will find that block book or water bottle and notice how, how you have this lovely long line underneath the right ribs. We're going to be here for about 10 breaths, guys. Option one is for you to stay in this variation. If you're happy here, stay. Option two, if you're pretty comfortable with this, you can start to hover the right hand from the mat, work into your balance. Option three, right hand on the mat, bend the back knee, and see if you can catch the foot with the hand, chapasana for your bind. Wherever you are, notice what the breath is doing. Slow the breath. Can you smooth it all out? If you're in Japasana, you release the bite. And as controlled as you can, guys, we're floating back to that warrior two. So bend the right knee, super slow, controlled as you point the back toes. We step ourselves back to that warrior. Now from the warrior, we inhale the hands to the sky, lift the front toes and face them in. So you should now be facing the side of the room. Bring hands to hips. As you inhale, squeeze the elbows tight together behind your back and exhale, slowly folding in two as the hands reach the earth. Prasarita A. And you have many options here this morning. If this serves you to be still, then by all means stay exactly where you are. If the head is reaching the earth and you would like to come up into your tripod headstand, you can start to take that now. Or if you have any other variation, maybe forearm stand, another inversion that you would like to explore, you can start to work on that here. Slow the breath wherever you are. If you find that the backs of the legs are giving you a lot of sensation, maybe too much, then just encourage a micro bend in the knees, which will soften any pressure that you're putting in the hamstrings and therefore rise the tailbone higher to the sky. Full breath in. Take a long breath out. Those of you who may be inverted, start to make your way down. And then inhale to a flat back, halfway lift, and walk your hands all the way around to frame the right foot. And then shuffle right foot over to the edge of your mat as we prepare for our lizard pose. Release the back knee to the mat. You have the choice to stay here where we are. Maybe use the right hand to draw the right knee away from the body. Notice, so as not to drop that left hip, we're staying even in the torso. Try not to dip out too much into the shoulders. Or if the space is there, you may choose to melt to your forearms. You may even use a block as a cushion for the forehead. And see if you can start to be still 
and observe. Often when we work into really big sensation in the muscles, you'll find that the physical body starts to tense or tighten in other areas to compensate for that sensation. So as you hold here, just do a quick body scan and see where you may be holding excess tension. For me, it often forms in the left glute or in the shoulders. Last two breaths. And at the bottom of that exhale, start to walk your hands back upright. Shuffle the right foot back to where you started. Move any of your props out of the way. Option one from here is for you to step, lift the back knee, step yourself through your vinyasa and meet us back in a downward facing dog. If you would like to work into an arm balance here and come into your Ekapada Kundanyasana B, you can start to lift the back knee, place the right knee on the back of the arm, and maybe, just maybe, start to hover that left foot from your mat. If that's not working for you today, guys, you step it back and flow it through in whatever variation serves. We will all eventually meet back in a down dog. to catch our breath and to recenter. Let's find three together. We inhale one. I'm gonna turn around here and exhale. Inhale two. And exhale. Full breath in for three. And exhale. On the next breath, we bend the knees, look forward, step, hop or float, feet to hands. Halfway rise as you lengthen, exhale, forward fold. We inhale, hands all the way to the sky. Udva has stasana again, see if you can pass biceps from ears, keep the tailbone tucked, and exhale, hands to hut, samasthiti. We come to our second side. And start with chair pose, Utkatasana. Inhale, bend the knees and sweep the hands high. Notice what the breath is doing. If it's a little wild and free, how can you start to bring it back into the rhythm that we found at the start of this practice? As you exhale, we rock into the toes. And for five counts, we sink to the heels. Five. Four, keep pressing the toes into the mat for three, two, and for one. Optional, bin, bin, optional bakasana, or you can find your um, malasana yogi squat here. All the words today. So option one, bakasana for a second time. Maybe even your headstand. Now the body might be feeling a little bit warmer. Or you can stay with that yogi squat. If you're in the yogi squat, think about long spine, shoulders sliding down your back, heart reaching for the side. Last few breaths where you are. If you're in your crow, you can start to prepare for that shoot back. If you're in your malasana yogi squat like me, the hands will simply meet your mat. We come back to the forward fold. Halfway lift to lengthen and we all take our vinyasa to meet back in a downward dog. From here, the left leg will find the sky. Breathing in to flex that foot and then bend the knee and roll the hip open as you squeeze the heel to the sit bone. Find that lift through left hip. Really notice what's happening to your left body, but remember to square those shoulders as much as you can. There'll be a slight resistance. If you would like to flip to your wild thing, you can very slowly start to step the left foot behind you. If that doesn't serve you, stay where we are, and we will all come back together in a moment. Heart lifts as you 
exhale the left foot to wherever you are, we'll step between the hands and we meet together, high crescent lunge. Bind those hands together above the head. Again, biceps, passing ears, how much space is available for you in the shoulders today. Three breaths, guys, be still. And at the bottom of that third exhale, we spin the back heel to the mat and open up the arms to warrior two. Ground the back heel, really activate from that right glute. Energy rising through the crown of the head. Standing tall, we inhale to flip the palm and reverse. Peaceful warrior. And then preparing for Adha Trandrasana, left hand to mat in front of left foot. And we fly into that half moon. Remember, if you need to take blocks or books, you can start to find them here. And maybe you're staying here, maybe you start to play with floating the left hand from your mat. Maybe you work into the bind and start to bend your back knee in and find the foot with the hand. If you have the foot, see if you can press the foot into the hand and work into your spine. So more of a back bend in that variation. Last few breaths, expand into the pose. If you're in your Chapasana, start to release. Wherever you are, we are stepping back to warrior two. Take it nice and slow as you meet back where we started. Inhale to straighten the front leg, lift the hands, pigeon toe, left toes forward. Hands to hips, we inhale, lift the heart. Exhale, forward fold. This time, guys, I want you to take a hold of the big toes, preparing for Prasari to D. As you breathe in, lift the chest forward. Think about creating the longest spine that you can. And then exhale, pull on those toes and draw the belly toward your thighs. Slowing the breath. Again, if you have any variations that you would like to take, headstand, maybe forearm stand again here if that serves you. Always thinking about rolling tailbone higher to the sky and being longer in the spine. Last breath here. Full breath out. Gradually walking the hands around to the left foot, preparing for your lizard. Left foot can shuffle over to the left side of your mat. Hands to the center. Release the back knee to the earth. Any of those variations, left hand to inner knee. Or you may choose to bring your forearms to the mat. Notice how the sides might also be considerably different. This side for me is so much more tight than the other, so you may need to approach it slightly differently. And then maybe the eyes close and your focus turns entirely inward. Be still. Allowing the breath to be louder than the sound of any thoughts that may be trying to take over. Final breath in, long, easy breath out. Wherever you are, start to draw yourself back to where we started. Tucking the back toes, lifting the back knee. Now you have that choice to work into the arm balance. Left knee will find the back of the left tricep. Or alternatively, you can come with me and just take your vinyasa, stepping back to plank and flowing through your last one of the morning. See how smooth you can be in your movement and your breath.
And let's find three breaths together, meeting in downward dog. Inhaling one. And exhale. Inhale two. And exhale. Biggest breath for three. And exhale. Bending the knees now, look forward and float very, very lightly to a seat at the top of your mat. And just allow the hands to come to rest on the knees, palms facing down, close the eyes. I'm going to take a quick body scan to finish this morning. Stacking the spine, sit tall. Feeling the sit bones in contact with the mats. Subtle energy moving through the inner thighs as you allow the knees to fall open to the sides. Energy flowing through the inner thighs into the pelvis. This strong, solid root keeping you grounded. Traveling up through the belly, the mid belly and the chest. And through the shoulders as they soften down your spine. Subtle energy moving through the biceps, the eyes at the elbows, forearms, into the hands and tips of the fingers. Melting gently into your knees. And then allow that energy to travel back through the arms, resting at the base of the neck, the skull, and traveling all the way up, back and over to the top of the skull now, shining skull. And landing finally at your third eye center as you bring the hands to touch together at your heart. Float your thumbs to meet the energy at your third eye center. Having gratitude for the practice and for your incredible physical body for carrying you through. Take a full breath into the nose. Open the mouth and let that breath go. Together we say, Namaste. Thank you all so much for waking up with me this morning, for practicing and getting yourselves ready for your day ahead. Wonderful to see so many of you joining out there each week. You can catch me for a 60 minute power on a Thursday morning, 7.15 a.m. on our Digging On Demand platform. So I would love to see you guys there. You can ask me any questions or find me on Instagram at Lucy Maria Hill. Anything that you wanna work through in these sessions, please let me know. It's lovely to work directly with you guys on what you're looking to achieve on your mat. I hope you have a wonderful day ahead and I will see you next Wednesday. Jai. Namaste. Thank you.